This is probably the best fireplace drone that you can possibly use. You can actually bank your drone off here and land it in the rafters of lobby. So like I've been saying already, the rafters drones are absolutely huge. Most people aren't looking up in these beams for drones midway through the round when they're getting shot at and pushed from different directions. The defender doesn't know that you know where they're at. So they're, they're playing based off the assumption that you don't have information on them. And then when you come out of nowhere and floor bang them, they'll be like, ah, oh, this guy's cheating. But realistically, you're just the best droner in the world. So keep up the drone work, guys. You need to start droning properly in Rainbow Six because it will just make you way better and make it way easier to not only get more kills, but win more rounds, win more games, and just literally just be better. Just be better at the game. You just got to get better by droning better. It's just so easy and you're just, it's, everybody is trolling by not droning properly including me i kind of i kind of troll my drones a lot way too often like i should realistically be a better droner but realistically i'm too lazy but realistically if i wanted to rank up i would get better at droning so the first thing i want to talk about is pre-placed drones so because you can actually choose your spawn point that's where your drone's going to spawn in so choosing your spawn point before prep phase and getting ready to play the game before prep phase is actually actually a huge part of droning so in prep phase if you're picking this main entrance spawn this drone hole is going to be your best friend because this drone hole leads to kitchen, leads to dining, you can get your drones to bar hall, etc. So if they're, say, the master site, you drive your drone in here, you hop it up on the thing here, the window ledge, and you can actually get it up on these uh, shelves. So you can keep it on this shelf. You, if, you're, if you have the balls for it, you can jump to the next shelf. Again, the more shelves you jump to, the, uh, the more risky it gets. This is probably the best one on these shelves is behind this little tree it's pretty well hidden and you can see dining west main the door to dining the door to kitchen so any defenders roaming around here either in prep phase or early in the round if you continue sitting on this drone then you will see them you will spot them out you will know they're there and it will make for either one an easy kill if you're calling to your teammates or two just someone that you can cut off ignore hold the rotates etc so if your team say say you see a guy in dining and your team is pushing him out from trophy and maybe up west main or from the west main windows you could sit out this front door and you know that this guy cannot leave. If he pushes straight forward, your team's going to get him. And if you hold this cutoff, you're going to get him as you sprint away from the rest of your teammates. So that's just one way to use this very simple drone to clear out this area effectively. Some other really good spots in dining, though, are anywhere in these bushes. Pretty much for this entire map, any drones in these bushes are going to be very, very difficult to see. Uh, from a defender now if you are on defense i recommend just shooting out these bushes if you are playing against like higher level players who are using drones properly because as you can see you think that's the drone that's not even the drone the drone is here dude and like i have to get point blank at it to actually see it so you can tell like how good these bushes are for these drones the next one you can do so if you drive it through that drone hole again is you can actually put it in kitchen as well so if you hop her up here you can get up on these cabinets. You get in these cabinets if you want. You can put it in the microwave. Uh, but I just prefer to just throw it on the corner of this cabinet here because then I can see the solar stairs. So any defenders rotating down the solar stairs in prep phase, you'll see that they, okay, they do have a guy underneath. He has come down solar stairs. Maybe you see him come down solar stairs, but he doesn't actually come through this doorway. Then you know 100% that this guy is hiding in trophy somewhere. Maybe he's prone like this, waiting for attackers. So you can call out to your team, hey, there's one in trophy. And you know that for sure because he, he has come down these stairs, but he has not left this doorway. Because if he does, you'll see him on that drone again, right here, right? You'll see him come through this doorway and you'll know that he has maybe run to another part of the map. But if he doesn't, Again, lock this guy down trophy, an easy nade, an easy pre-fire, an easy flashbang hop in, whatever it may be, you can take that guy out. The next spot we're going to look at is the bar hall. So if we take our drone through this doorway, you can actually, again, hide him in the bushes and put it for this bar hallway. And this one's great because if there's a defender sitting by the game's entrance, so he's sitting over here, or he's in bar, or if he goes comes into bar from lobby or whatever, you can tell if they go into bar or games from this drone because... There's only the three entrances, right? There's the door over here, which you'll see them cross. There is the door over here, which you'll see them come down blue or come down the hallway. And then there's a door here. So you can see all the entrances into bar and games. And if they shotgun open the hatch and drop the hatch, you can hear it off this drone as well. So you'll know that both these rooms are clear just by setting up this pre-placed drone. So if you set up this drone and you're on it and your teammate wants to take games and push up maybe the blue stairs to try and get control of the hallway up there, then you can sit on this drone. You know it's clear. Say, hey, man. Just go into games, run out the blue stairs, you can take it really quick. You can catch a lot of people off guard that way, and you can get some free kills probably. If you want, you can also take your bar drone into bars. So this one's a little tougher. This is more of a like parkour drone. But if you get your drone up on this ledge, you can actually do that. 
and get it on top of the bar. So it is a little more of a tough maneuver. You have to turn your drone and land it on the side, but you have to jump from the straight edge. It's it's tough to parkour with the drones like this, but if you can, I would recommend this one because it's also really good. Uh, you can see anyone in bar. You can hear anyone in stock, which is the closet right next to bar. So from the drone here, you can hear anybody shuffling around in the stock closet, whether they're moving back and forth or just crouching, uncrouching, turning their camera. You can actually hear that from that drone as well. So this is also a really good drone uh, if you are taking like the bar games area. This is good for... Um, let's say you are doing a canine take or like an ego balk take and you try to take top fireplace or main lobby and you're trying to clear stuff off the wall. This is really good because sometimes defenders will sit here and try to catch you as you come in through the front door or they'll be in this hallway over here, but you can see them cross. So this is a really good drone for information on that sort of thing. So this next spot is a early prep phase drone that you could set up if the site is bar. So where the bomb site currently is, if the defenders are there, this is a really good drone that you can get in site if you can get it early. So if you pick the helipad spawn or whatever it's called, and you drive it right in through the site drone hole and get it in here early while the other team's setting up, you can actually hop it on these shelves and hop it in this little crease of the pillar thing. And then if there's a guy on this stock door, you can hear him shuffling. Um, it, you, you just have the information on this back hallway in sight. You know, whether it's late round, it comes down to a 2v2 and you know one's here and you know have a general idea where the other one is, then that's super, super powerful information that could literally make or break a round. So that's another good drone. Uh, very niche, you know, you're only going to really use it on the bar site, but it works pretty well. This next drone, you're just going to drive in from the lobby door. This is great for like a basement defense or even uh, a master defense if you're attacking from like lobby side again. So you can actually hide it on this plant and then if they come around the corner to reinforce the hatch, it's going to be pretty well hidden. So you can tell from here it's not, but if you if they come around to reinforce the hatch, this pillar actually hides it. So this is also a nice one. Uh, you can just tuck it in behind the plant like this. And then again, it's pretty well hidden, um, but that way it's a little more hidden straight on. Uh, this one's a little more obvious, but it does give you some pretty good information on lobby as well. Moving on to top fireplace, there's a couple different drones you can do up here. There's tons and tons of spots for top fireplace. And of course, fireplace control is so, so strong because from top fireplace, what can you do? You can open up the main breach, you can hold the lobby flank, you can hold the blue stairs flank, you have control of library and ivy hall, so you can pressure piano and site directly as well from here. So top fireplace is one of the most powerful places in the game, especially for um, the master bomb site, the bar bomb site, and the dining bomb site. Basement is not as important unless you are trying to like open up the lobby floor and, and, and pressure site that way, but that's less common. So for the other three sites though, this is an area that you pretty much always want to get, especially if you are doing these kind of takes. Now, there are ways around it if you're doing like a solar take, whatever, but top fireplace is a very powerful position on chalet. So the drones in top fireplace, therefore, are also very important and very powerful. So the first one is up on this plant. Now, you can see top fire from here where a lot of a lot of people play. You cannot ping it because the plants will be in your way, but you can still call this guy. You can still call this guy out if he's playing around this pillar. You know, he's peeking K9, he's peeking main lobby door, etc. So how do you actually kill this guy? Well, going to the Ivy window is probably gonna be your best way to pressure this guy and push him out of the spot. So at least he has to play a little more reserved in order to stay alive. So this cam is a good one for this. Uh, the other thing you can do is you can actually hop it on this ledge and on this little window frame again and you can get your drone up on one of these plants. So these plants are another great way to get drones. And with this, you can also see the lobby flank a little bit better as well. So you can see not only the top fire guy, but you can see lobby now. You have to be careful because he could be chilling up here, but hopefully you have some team eights, teammates on the balcony with this window open so that he isn't able to play here. And that would force him to be exposed to your drone. And then you will see that he is moving around up here or whatever, whatever he's planning on doing. So this is great if your team's like trying to take library and push this guy out and get that type of fireplace control. Now, getting a pretty place in the library is pretty tough because there are not any real drone entrances into it. Of course, you can come through the bar drone hole up blue stairs and get your drone into library or you can come up from the main lobby stairs. But at this point, you might have defenders up here shooting the drones. But if you can get your drone into library, there are some good spots for it in here as well. So... On this shelf, you're pretty exposed, but if you hop over to this shelf and get up on this plant here, then you can get a great view of library and a little bit of top fireplace and the box here. So if they push into this room, you can call them out very easily, get some pre-fires from the window or whatever it may be. And this one is also super hidden. As you can see there, I didn't even realize which plant it was on, 
but there you go. So that's a good library drone if you can get it. And, uh, you know, this is even good for the basement bomb site because what some people will do is they'll come up here early in prep phase and they'll prep this window to hop out on you as you're mavericking or throwing the wall and take out the cover that way. So having the information on this is great. So this would be probably ideal for like the basement bomb site for that purpose if you are going for that front wall take. So if you've chosen the campfire spawn, this next drone is going to be uh, one of the best spots to put it. So from the campfire spawn, you can drive your drone by the trophy drone hole, drive it in here, and you can get this really solid drone up in trophy on the animal head. I don't know what kind of animal this is. Maybe it's like a, a puma or something. A, 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 I don't know animals. Don't roast me. But you can get it on this head, and you can see people like playing back on this pillar, which a lot of people will play on. And this is a super easy grenade spot. I've killed so many people either playing here or on the solar stairs um, with a grenade. So either they'll be playing here to contest the trophy hop in, right? They'll be peeking off this and waiting for you to vault in, or they'll be playing here, maybe contesting it this way and then swinging as you hop in. So getting grenades off of this drone is very, very strong. And if you if they're on these stairs here, you'll probably hear them. Um, but if not, you can always drop it down and check just to see if there is a guy there. But this is a good way to see if anyone's hiding um, in any of these little cubbies here, which a lot of people will hide behind. Uh, and it's it's pretty decently hidden as well. Uh, now you can also do the wolf, but this one's a little more tough uh, because you have to parkour over a couple window sills. And as you can see, I'm I'm struggling a little bit, but it is a little more hidden. Um, but this one works as well. The last pre-placed drone though is going to be if you drive it all the way up the blue stairs, you can hop it on this ledge here and get it once again in one of these little planters. Uh, which just allows you to see the hallway. If you really want, you can get it up on the beam above as well. This also works, uh, but it's a little more tough, a little couple extra jumps and really not necessary if you ask me, but it works just as well. And if you guys didn't know, um, changing the angle you're looking at affects how you jump the drone. If you haven't noticed at this point, if you're looking straight, the drone will jump not very high. If you look straight up, it will jump literally straight up. So based on the angle of where you're aiming, the drone will jump higher or further as you can as you can tell okay so now we will move on from the pre-place prep phase drones so all those drones you just saw would be in the prep phase now we're going to talk about mid-round drones so those drones you would throw or use partially through the round to actually just freaking power up and destroy people with so the biggest thing about chalet is pretty much all of the rooms have these beams in it, at least on the top floor. And these beams are drone central station. They're nasty. They're good for echo cams. They're good for twitch cams. They're good for zero cams. They're good for regular drones. They are so, so strong. So abusing them with your drones is a great way to play this map. So firstly, you have the library double window. A lot of people will play in here. A lot of people will push here. They'll contest this push in. They will shoot your drones if you try to hop it into this window. They'll be ready for it. They'll shoot the drone. You'll have no info. And that's not good because then you'll be pushing in blind and just kind of hoping that you win the gunfight or predict where he is. So having accurate info for this is going to be really important. That's why instead of doing that, I'll open up this window and bank my drone off the ceiling here. And what that does is it lands it in the beams. You can actually hop it over to the other beams if you want or up here. You can see if anyone's in the corner and you can just use these beams actually to get your drone around and get that information that you need to see and make sure everything's clear. So using these beams is a super great way to get information on library and clear people out of here with nades. So sledge super good or Yana, Finko, whoever right now, like nades are really, really strong right now. And in combination with, with drones, your grenades will be 10 times better than whatever you're doing with them right now. So if we take this chalet beam philosophy and move on to another spot, we can actually use the big window as well for this. So if you shoot open the big window and aim at this little point on the roof, your drone will land perfectly on the pillar and you can hop it across to this beam and you have information on all of master all of a sudden. So if you take underneath with the grenades and you're good at cooking grenades through the floor, which is a great skill to learn if you don't know how to, you can nade out anybody in this room from underneath with a simple drone and a simple nade and it is just one of those most beautiful ways to play the game right now. So this next one is really great for solar, which is this room right here. So if you're trying to just enter it or get some nade kills off on it, or you're just trying to, you know, take it for whatever site, this is a great way to enter the map. Uh, but if you just throw your drone in like you normally would, it will just get shot by anybody kind of in this area. Maybe you'll drive it over here and the guy will be playing there and he'll shoot your drone. So 
there's a better way to do it. And that would be banking it off this pillar, which will then hit the roof thing and then land on this. So to do that, you just wanna make sure you're pretty low on the repel, line it up so that once it bangs, it's gonna land on that beam. And then you just toss away and you'll see there, it will hit the top, it'll land on this white beam. And then from there, you can hop it up on these beams. So using these beams, you can then check out solar, see what's going on. You can continue jumping across if you have the balls for it. And you can see, anyone playing in here and this allows you to get any nades off yes they will hear the jumping but they probably won't know where it's at so if you're if you really want you can be sneaky with it you could just not jump it at all minus that first beam jump and then you can kind of just drive it back and forth along these beams to get information on the guys in this area so you can see if he's on the stairs you'll see if he's by the bathroom door playing by the owl this spot's called owl or if they're on the master door so in combo with that last drone you saw on master these two drones can give you information on half of the top floor site so you see solar you see master the only thing left that you're not that you don't know of is bathroom piano and office on this side of the top floor which is you know i would say that's like 50 percent of the rooms on the top or 50 percent of the surface area of the top floor is then is then information that you're not losing you can constantly have and constantly use on these guys it's 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 miraculous it's beautiful it's brilliant so this next drone is another drone you could throw part way into the round and it allows you to get information on fireplace. This is probably the best fireplace drone that you can possibly use. You can actually bank your drone off here and land it in the rafters of lobby. So like I've been saying already, the rafters drones are absolutely huge. So using this, you can drive it around. You can hop again between the pillars um, and you can get information on whoever's in fireplace here. Now I did just mess it up and drop it down. But again, you can go beam to beam getting information. You can just drive it across the top beam. And realistically, at least I don't do this. And you know, most people aren't looking up in these beams for drones midway through the round when they're getting shot at and pushed from different directions. They're probably not concerned with drones in the beams because at least I don't think that anybody uses them. At least I haven't shot any drones in these beams. So if you're using these drones and these beams and calling out off of them and just getting the information, firstly, the defender doesn't know that you know where they're at. So they're they're playing based off the assumption that you don't have information on them. And then when you come out of nowhere and floor bang them, they'll be like, ah, oh, this guy's cheating. But realistically, you're just the best droner in the world. So keep up the drone work, guys. So the other thing you can do if you are like, the offside player or whatever if you're playing these highway windows and you're putting pressure on piano bathroom ivy window whatever it may be while your team is say opening the main breach or working fireplace or whatever then you can actually use your drones to rather than just diving in the window and getting shot by the defender playing here instantly and losing your information what you can do is you can either one hop it up in the ledge and hold it like this so that way they actually have to be looking for it in the window ledge to see it and then you can see what utility your team needs to clear you can see what you're dealing with or you can just hop it up and down on the window to actually get quick glances of information of what you might see. So if you have it here, you can hop it in the window and say, oh yeah, he's playing there. He's playing on two ping. He's playing on two ping. He's playing top fireplace, right? You can use this drone just hopping up and down to get that information without them actually shooting the drone and getting rid of your information. Now sure, you could drive it in here. That's pretty loud. He's probably going to look over and just shoot your drone right away. So from jumping it outside the window and just keep getting these quick peaks of information, uh, it's a better way to keep your drone alive and keep the information alive for your team. So that way, if you see that he's jumped over top fireplace at one point while doing this, then you say, hey, he, he jumped over top fireplace is clear. You can now take it or you can now push him because he's in lobby or whatever the circumstance is, right? Okay, so that's all for like the mid round drones that you could use. Um, of course, you could just do regular droning where you're just driving it through and people are following it, etc. These are some like fancier ways to um, get good information and keep it alive at the same time. The last thing we need to talk about is flank drone spots. So flank drones are super, super key. Your dead teammates can watch flank drones so that you don't have to worry about it. If you're getting flanked, sometimes that's just a free kill that can spiral into winning the round. So having flank drone set up is another great thing. And if you are dead, watch the flank drones because people just don't do this for whatever reason. This could make or break your round. This could make or break the game. So just, if you're dead, you might as well just sit on the drones. Um, if they're there to do it which a lot of the time they are just not so setting up flank drones is also a great way to improve and win more yes you are just one person you can't do all these drones of course but imagine you send this video to all your friends your whole squad you get a squad whatever it is and everybody is rocking these drones you will literally dominate your rank games if you did if you did this in a full squad so do your part 
and maybe just hope your teammates do too. So the first flank drone we're going to talk about is this fireplace drone. So you can put it under this desk, just right in the main door. You can do this in prep phase, you can do this mid round, whatever it may be. But this drone allows you to see the blue flank. So if they come from the basement up blue stairs, if they come from the top floor down blue stairs, but you can also see the main stairs flank. So if they come from the basement from main stairs or they come from the dining hall and they walk into lobby. So this drone is great because it sees every possible way they could flank from in both directions, right? If that one's getting shot, because that is a pretty common one, you can also jump onto these shelves in lobby. So this is another variant, I guess, of the exact same thing. But you can see, again, the bottom of the blue stairs. So if they come up the blue stairs or if they come from lobby. So just setting it like this, you're a dead teammate. You can look back and forth on your screen. You can say, okay, one's coming from dining hall. He's in lobby. He's flanking your fireplace stairs. Or one's coming up from the basement stairs of lobby. He's going to flank your main stairs. He's coming up blue stairs on you. He's flanking your blue stairs, right? So you can call this out to your team so they can turn around, kill that guy, and then go from there, right? Of course, we talked about this pre placed drone already, but this is another great drone for the blue flank. Some other options or variants for the blue flank, if you have a drone for blue and one for main stairs, is uh, on the shelf here, up on this plant again. That's another good option. You just have to spin it around the other way. If I can do it, come on, Pox, you got it. So there you go. You can see the blue stairs flying from this one. You can even use like a main lobby camera, like something like this. This is one I tend to use in prep phase a lot just to see. As you can see, you can see top blue, you can see library door, you can see bar door, you can see bottom in, you can see short hallway. And then if they run into lobby, you will want to just quickly get this drone out of lobby because the chances are probably going to shoot it or see it and shoot it. So using that for early information is a great way to use your drone on Chalet as well. So I just spawned into a new round. My drone spawned outside the garage. So here's a great flank drone for if the site is uh, dining or if the site's bar or if the site's master, anything but the basement pretty much. This is a great flank drone because you can see both staircases on it. So from this drone, you can see the main lobby staircase, the blue staircase. You can put it under here instead if you'd like. Um, but it's a great way to kind of hide your drone from anybody coming down this hallway. And you can see if they flank the main stairs or the blue stairs from the very depths of the basement so this is a good one for if you're doing that take that same library side uh sort of take and you want the the flank information for that the next one is going to be a wine flank drone so this drone is really good if you are taking like up the west main stairs so say you have a teammate coming in from the trench door he's pushing up west main to clear those dining guys out and then you're going to need the guys and master through the floor or it's a dining site and you're coming up from the west main stairs or whatever whatever it is so another good flank drone for wine is up here on these kegs so what this allows you to do is put tuck your drone in here so if they walk past they're not going to be really looking behind them right they're not going to see this drone so they'll be walking past wine to flank the west main stairs and you can just see them call them out they don't know they've been spotted on the flank so in their mind they still think they're safe to flank and maybe surprise some people and get some kills but realistically there is no surprise at all all they the only surprise is some guy holding a weird ass angle to shoot them in the back when they walk past so say i'm outside the trench door holding this flank i wait for him to go up i wait for him to turn the corner and then he's about to start flanking west main and i hop off the drone punch the door and shoot him in the back and that guy's dead and he's like Dude, the timing or whatever it is, but realistically, it wasn't timing. You were just aware that he was flanking the entire time. This next drone spot is going to be a west main flank. So this would be like if you're doing a back take for the basement and you need something to hold the west main flank so you're not getting flanked by defenders coming down the stairs. And west main is a tough spot to actually find drones. Now, you could hide it in the shelf um, to see once they walk past. You can hide it kind of under this desk to see if they walk past here. They would have to, like, go prone to shoot this. Um, and you can also hide it kind of in dining in these bushes again. So these are all pretty good options to see if they are flanking this west main area. And that way you're not getting completely surprised um, by the guy coming down the stairs. Now, realistically, you'll probably want a guy holding the west main flank because if your entire team is stacked here, fighting the guy on the stairs is pretty tough because typically if you're playing good players at least, what they'll do is they'll kind of quick pick this angle and look for these fights pretty safely with the cover of the wall. So if it were me and I was holding this flank, I would most likely be out one of these two west main windows and open up both so he doesn't know which one you're outside of and then what I can do is I can sit here on my drone I can say oh he's coming from trophy split I see him come from trophy split and I hold an angle like this or I wait I wait for him uh, say my drone's here and I see him walk into west main and he starts coming down the west main stairs then I hop in and I pre-fire him and I shoot him in the back and my team swings him at the same time whatever, and we just clap this guy as he as he attempts to flank um, because holding these aggressive angles, like if I'm just sitting here holding the flank like this, 
more than likely this is going to be what they check so that way they can flank because they're going to be taking their fights one at a time if they're smart so if i wait until he's in an awkward spot in the middle of the open and i just pre-fire it i'm more than likely going to get the kill without risking getting quick peek one tapped or absolutely smoked off of this angle right this next one would be for like if you're doing a solar take on the master bomb site so say your team is pushing in through trophy coming up the stairs or repelling in the windows and pushing bathroom and stuff this is just a pretty common flank drone spot so if i'm a defender coming through here i'm probably not going to see it just because it is under the desk a bit so if i'm coming like this as you can see you can kind of see it out of the corner of my eye there right but it's it's pretty well hidden it is a little dark under there already so it's a little tough to see but this is a this is a decent spot to have a flank drone and at least if they shoot it you know that they are coming on this flank as well this last flank drone is going to be just like a short slash long slash bar hall slash main lobby flank drone so i call this short and this long but putting a drone here is just a good way to see if they are flanking dining so if your teammates are under here you know maybe you're trying to nade out the site from below and you have a teammate with a drone here and maybe he has another drone here for the west main flank or the one in wine like we showed earlier then somebody can just cycle these drones and if you see a defender coming up here or a defender coming around the corner here you'll hear them as well you say hey there's one flanking dining he's flanking your short right or there's one flanking west main stairs so that way the guy in dining who's named below can then use that call out to be ready for this fight and kill either of the guys flanking them from over here and ideally your teammates are working up solar at the same time so you don't have to really worry about them coming through here but just having a cycle on those flank drones is a great way to get free kills as well now it does require a little more teamwork requires a little more communication a little more trust but if you can establish that you will become one of the best players as long as your aim isn't completely dog shit